This isn't a polished video um, like you're used to from me. Uh, you know, I have the green screen and the lights are just hitting me. I just got done filming some other stuff. I, you know, I work really hard on this channel, so to have to take time to do this is just stupid, but here we go. Um, so a couple days ago, I, I check the comments every day and I respond, I reply when I can to any, anybody that, you know, talks directly to me, you know, like, hey Adam, I love your show, or hey Adam, you know, you suck or whatever. I just try to engage. I never insult people or call them names. I was just, I'm like, okay, well, what do you want me to work on, you know, or thanks for enjoying the show. But then I got a comment from Grace Randolph from her channel. I don't, I can't remember what it's called. I don't watch it, but I, I know she's like a bigger YouTuber and she's got a big following. Um, so she, you know, she's legit. And all she says was, you're sexist. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> Why am I sexist? I didn't, I didn't say anything sexist in the video, so I respond, I reply to her, I'm like, how am I sexist? And, you know, in hindsight, I probably should have worded it more delicately, because she is a woman, and she could have been having her period, and she would have taken it the wrong way, but I, I just kind of went for it, you know, like, how am I sexist? That, that's when things started to spiral out of control, because before I even had to, like, follow up again with her, Chris Stuckman fucking white knights me on YouTube. You know, he comes to her side, to her aid, and he's like, you know, back off, Adam. Why do you gotta be such a dick? Uh, I, those weren't his exact words, I can't remember. I, I removed a lot of the co hate comments because it was just so overwhelming for a while. And, and before I could even respond to him, his boy toy, John Flickinger, jumps in, who he's good friends with, and they've done a lot of videos together, and he's, he's like, say that shit to my face. I'm like, what shit? What are you even talking about? But I don't want to mess with John Flickinger. That dude's big. He's a big guy. He, he works out a lot. I don't know if, it's to, if he's short and it's to overcompensate for that. And I, I was blessed with the, the gift of height. So, you know, I'm naturally better than most people. I'm almost 6'3". I come from a better stock. Re regardless, I, I didn't want to piss John Flickinger off. You know, he's, he kicked, he break me like a twig. Um, so I just deleted all the comments. I couldn't, I couldn't deal it. You know, I, I screen grabbed them because um, I figured at this point I have to do a video and then, then I removed them. I don't want that kind of hate uh, around my channel. So I was hoping by the next day this would all kind of just fall away, you know, since I got rid of the comments and everything. But right away when I wake up, what do I see? A tweet from Jeremy fucking Johns. One of the funniest YouTube critics out there. Just a very charismatic, likable guy. He's very popular. I've been trying to get him on my show for freaking years. You know, I've tweeted at the guy, I've Facebook messaged him, I've pleaded with him on YouTube. I can't get him to respond to me. But here he is on my Twitter tweeting directly at me. And so you can imagine my hurt and my pain when he says, eat a bag of dicks. That's what he tweets me, eat a bag of dicks. And you know what? For, nobody tells me when I can eat a bag of dicks. I'll make that decision on my own. And then here come the memes, right? And to make matters worse, Philip DeFranco posts on his YouTube video a whole session dedicated to how I'm a sexist pig uh, with a brilliantly photoshopped image of me eating said bag of dicks like this. And, and two things right out of the gates. First off, I must have been on a fucking diet because that's like half the quantity that I would take in. And two, those are the wrong color. That's, I, I'm off track, that's beside the point. This just opened the floodgates even further. Next thing you know, people are checking out my channel. They see I don't like Suicide Squad, so here come the DC biased fucktards with their nonsense, calling me out, tweeting at me. There's Reddits dedicated to how I'm an asshole, and it's just the whole thing is just blown way out of proportion at this point. One kid privately messaged me that I'm a moron and that I wouldn't understand a good Superman movie if it hit me in the face, to which I replied, tell that to Zod Snapped Neck. And I know, that was an immature way to handle it, I'm just poking the bear even further now. The turning point in all of this was, I think, two days later, after I thought this was finally done, I wake up to my beautiful wife sitting next to me in bed, uh, she's on my computer looking at some of my comments, which I never let her do, but she knew I was distressed lately and she wanted to see what all the fuss was about. You know, I try to keep my YouTube channel private from my family, uh, but sometimes shit just spills out, especially when she can see I'm emotionally drained. So she looks and she's got tears streaming down her face. And, and I knew instantly that she was looking at some of the, the hate speech that was being thrown in my, in my direction. And I... You know, I, I just, I just 
held on to her and I embraced her. She's threatened in them. They're making fun of my children. They, they, they talk about how they're gonna kill my fucking dog. I just couldn't do it anymore. And that's why I really had to make this video. <laughs> Listen, you can say whatever you want about me. I have thick skin, I can take it. I've been doing this for a long time. You can say whatever you want about my wife and my kids, but when you attack a fictitious dog that I may or may not one day purchase and have in my house, that's when you cross the fucking line. That's when you fucking cross the line. I will not take that. It was really nice having a friend to talk to. And that's why reaching out to one of my best friends, Jonathan Paula, was such a eye-opening and helpful experience. I have some of the phone conversation I recorded. When Aaron called me up and reminded me who he was, I couldn't believe it. I don't believe it. Wait, who is this again? It's Adam <clears throat> from Movie Feuds. We've done like five collaborations together. Consider you a close personal friend. You sound upset. Is uh, everything okay? No, John, it's not fucking okay. I was called names on the internet, and people made photos of me eating bags of dicks, when clearly those were not the bags of dicks I was eating in real life. Flaccid or erect? There's no time for your jokes, John. But the latter, obviously. Of course, that's great and everything, but uh, what's this have to do with me? You've got experience with this, what should I do? Calm your tits, we'll figure it out. Let's start from the beginning. So Alan brought me up to speed, and I did my best to help, but honestly, I had my own situations to deal with. Between my ongoing feud with the Nostalgia Critic, some sub-tweets to the Schmoes No Guys, and an angry Facebook campaign against American Airlines, I had my hands full. And so did I. Except, you know, because I was holding so many dicks. I have since removed any trace of shrewd, ugly, ignorant comments from message boards and threads and forums and any, any, anything you can think of, photos, it's all gone. Because I feel like I am a movie critic, but I'm also a human being. And I should be able to freely judge films and make fun of them without people being able to judge and make fun of me. I think that's just fair and right. So when this shit comes, when this happens to me, I, I, I just can't even, I don't even know. I almost feel sick to my stomach. That's really what it comes down to is I feel sick to my stomach. And yeah, there's going to be people out there, like they're always as naysayers that are looking at this video and they're like, you're just making all this up, Adam, for the hope that you can cash in on views and maybe gain subscribers piggybacking off the popularity of much more successful stars. And yeah, that is true, but I will deny it up and fucking down the block until I die, which might not be much longer based on some of the mean comments I received. You know, Andy's been through hell lately. Sure, you could argue there are worse things in this world like war, rape, famine, or no man's sky, but look at it from Aiden's perspective, a white, privileged individual attacked on social media by petulant children. If that doesn't rank up there with those other terrible things, I don't know what does. I thought about quitting. For a while now, I thought if this can happen to me, a good looking, successful, white, privileged, mid tier YouTuber, this could happen to just about anybody. So I think of little Timmy who wants to start his YouTube show. I'm looking out for him. I'm looking out for teenager Gabrielle who goes out and wears non-prescription glasses and a tight v-neck Batman t-shirt and buys a bunch of collectibles off of eBay to put in her background and she's called a poser for it. That's what worries me, that's what troubles me. Anyway, things are getting better now, I guess. My wife and kids have left me. They moved out a few weeks ago due to the lack of respect they have for watching a grown man cry over seemingly pointless things. <laughs> I'm homeless, my house burnt to the ground. What I can only assume uh, is from a nine-year-old mob of kids who liked Suicide Squad. I am giving BJ's to truckers in a parking lot in exchange for a hot meal or a place to sleep. 
But I still have my green screen. I still have my lights um, in this abandoned warehouse. Still have my camera. I still have my audience that I can cry to when things get bad. And really, complaining to strangers on the internet about fucking pointless issues that have no bearing on the rest of society is what it's all about.